Hi, I'm Bill Ritchie, and today we're going to test press number 46. This is a mini half wood press, and every time I make a press, I test it before it goes out. This one is a little unique. It has a brass bed. This is an optional uh, item that this owner wanted. And it's a uh, typical black walnut press with brass fixtures, and for the wood trim, I used button wood and a little bit of ebony here and there. But our object today is to test it, make sure it works. It's an intaglio press, but today I chose to print relief instead of intaglio. So we'll get to that in a minute. I'll put out a little bit of black relief printing ink to begin. This is a happens to be a Daniel Smith relief printing black oil-based ink. work it up a little bit with the spatula and I have a brayer, an old six inch speed ball soft brayer. I always use soft brayers when I'm printing relief. My trusty old brayer. The newer brayers look a little differently today. Um, if you want to buy one, they look something like that. Speedball is an old company. It's been around a long time. There are other companies that sell relief uh, printing brayers. It's a soft Speedball. When you roll out a relief ink, you go in two directions and you let the wheel sort of spin each time. That's why I'm lifting it off. The idea is to get the ink very evenly distributed. And now I'll start inking the plate. The rather unusual plate is kind of long and skinny. And it's tricky to ink a plate uh, with a, a brayer that doesn't quite fit. You have to kind of go in lots of directions. Otherwise, you'll get what are called brayer marks where the edges of the brayer show. It's a copper plate, been etched with ferric chloride, as a matter of fact, and it has an aqua tint on it, which will give it a speckly gray kind of a spotty background. That's all intentional. But there are some fine lines in there too that I want. It's good to charge the roller from time to time. And this is the first time I printed this plate, so I really don't know how it's going to look. We call the first prints from a plate like this the trial proofs. For obvious reasons, we're just trying them out. Sometimes when I'm testing a press, I also call that a trial proof of the press. This isn't really a printing demonstration. It's a just a test of the press itself, so I can't spend too much time going over the fine points of printing. The pad, by the way, is what I call a sticky pad. It's made of that kind of kitchen uh, non-stick surface that you can buy in supplies in uh, kitchen stores, and it's just stapled onto a piece of hard hardboard. The press comes with blankets or felts, in a box. This is the printmaker's kit that you get when you buy a mini half wood. It comes with new blankets. I'll be using my old used blankets. You also get a little book that tells about the birth of the press. You get a test plate. You get uh, an owner's manual. You get a DVD that includes this videotape that we're making right now. Postcards and an Allen wrench. Roll the bed out all the way to the stops and place two blankets. Sometimes etching presses use three, but the little mini half wood presses are so small they only require two. Then we try to start the press. Now if it's too tight, well there is actually a better way, I'll go over that, is to crank the roller with the pressure screws all the way down till they touch the base. And then you count, you count the, the uh, turns backward and raise the pressure. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. That should do it. The eight half turns equals four full turns. And it goes right in. And then tighten it back down. One, two, and that should do it. Especially for a relief print, it doesn't take much pressure. To do the relief print, I should place the paper first. The paper was dampened with water and uh, let to stand for, oh, I don't know, 24 hours. Start the paper. Place the, the uh, printing plate. And turn it through. You notice I'm not letting the paper touch until uh, it's going through. We have a, a phenomena called push, that if you let the paper just lie on the plate, it kind of picks up little bits of ink as it goes and creates an unsightly effect. Now in order to get the paper out, I'm going to have to take the pressure off so that the video camera can see the print as I take it up. There we go. I'm going to take another proof, this time on a pre-printed yellow sheet of paper. This press will print linoleum cuts and it will print wood cuts up to about a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, also a material called safety cut, which is a it's kind of soft eraser like white material that you can buy in art supply stores. That's called easy or a safety cut spelled with a K. The press usually comes with a Lexan bed, not brass. Brass is an optional item, but it makes a very beautiful bed. Brass does. Lexan is lightweight. The mini halfwood is built partly for its portability. You can carry it around. The Lexan bed, it only weighs about 12 pounds. With the brass bed, you have to add another two pounds at least. When we print intaglios, we have to be more careful with pressure than we do when we're printing relief prints. I think I mentioned that this was an experiment from the other day. We'll just see how it looks with black overprinted. I'm not using a registration system. I'm just going to be going by eye here. Well, this proves that the tress works, and that's kind of an interesting image. Okay, that completes the test. We know it works. I'm Bill Ritchie, and you're in my studio in Seattle, and I thank you very much for watching.